This is the Transformers Generations Studio Series 86 figure number 31 from the movie Transformers the Movie. We have Commander Class Optimus Prime. Oh my goodness. Finally, I got this figure. It's taken a while. Ever since it was revealed, I was anxious to get this figure. The box looks basic standard Commander Class uh, something very similar to what we've seen with the Ultra Magnus Commander Class figure. Great artwork and all that. Fantastic. Just fantastic artwork. It takes you back to the 1986 movie. I picked up this set from Robo Robo. Let's get this guy out of packaging. So this figure does come with a diorama. Very nice looking diorama. I think this is a scene that is depicted in the movie where he has his final battle with Megatron. You can see all the bell damages. Megatron must be stopped no matter the cost. shall stand one shall fall and here is the studio series 86 optimus prime out of the box and holy heck you guys this figure completely blew me away i have not even transformed this figure just took him out of the packaging just messed around with it just got him into some serious posing and dynamic poses and oh my goodness hasbro and takara tomi have managed to create a masterpiece figure for the mainline mass retail toy line of Studio Series. Incredible. The details are absolutely spot on. I'm sure I'm going to find a few things I'm not going to like about the figure, some nitpicks here and there, but that will not stop or deter anybody from just appreciating how awesome and quite literally a masterpiece of a figure that Takara, Tomi, and Hasbro have managed to come up with. Let's take a closer look at how amazing this figure is. Head to toe, the figure stands at about 19 centimeters tall or about seven and a half inches tall. And here we have the different various trailers of Optimus Prime figures that I still have in my collection. Obviously the one in the middle is uh, the Studio Series 86 with the repair bot right there. This one on the right is the G1 trailer, which is the Missing Link trailer. It doesn't have the launcher, as you can see. It's got the stickers. This one's got molded in a display, but it still has the repair bot uh, with the arm and the radar dish. Both the Studio Series 86 and the Missing Link do still have that opening cockpit for the repair bot. And obviously this one is the now obsolete and <laughs> updated uh, Kingdom or Earthrise Leader Class Optimus Prime trailer. Yeah, you can, you can see how small it is. It actually fits well inside the trailer of the Studio Series 86. And if you wanted to see how the stands, the trailer, uh, the trailer locking stands look like, the G1 looks like this. The new one actually look, looks more modern, looks Cybertronian actually uh, compared to the old one but the uh, fenders the wheels even the sides of the trailer this one looks more cartoon accurate this one looks more like the toy the Earthrise one looks more like the toy decals but it doesn't have the swing out uh, stabilizing stand and if you want to see the trailers all closed up this is what they look like uh, the uh, CEO Series 86 is pretty much longer than the G1. And to see them all stacked up, obviously the Kingdom or Earthrise War for Cybertron Trilogy is the smallest. G1, and here's the new Studio Series 86 trailer. It looks really nice and they got the details down to the old G1, the Autobot logo. And a comparison of the accessories of each of the Optimus, of the Optimus Prime figures I've shown you guys. We'll start with Roller. Much thicker, much wider version of Roller. Very accurate, I guess, to the cartoon. Uh, I do apologize, I've not put the wheels on the Missing Link version. Here is the Ion Blaster. This is the original uh, Earthrise Kingdom Blaster. This is uh, from that weapon pack from the uh, Centurion drone, Generation Select Centurion drone. As you can see, I think this is more cartoon accurate, but this one just 
really looks so much more badass than this one but uh you get to see where the inspiration comes from from the old g1 ion blaster and then finally the uh battle the energon battle axe uh this one is from the earthrise and i think it's still the best one well missing link is actually pretty good as well and unfortunately the pseudo series is the worst one but it is the most cartoon accurate though uh but i just love these uh crisp these hard clear plastic uh that the other optimus prime figures had so let's do some comparisons here he is with leader class uh, legacy galvatron they're actually the same height i am shocked and then here he is with the Earthrise Voyager class Starscream. Obviously, we're going to need a new Starscream mold. If he's about to disguise himself as Optimus Prime, he's not going to pull it off. And here he is with his Nemesis. <laughs> he's much shorter. Nemesis Bridge Voyager class Megatron. Oh, man. We need a new Megatron mold. There are rumors of a Studio Series 86 Megatron. And if Hasbro and Takara Tomy decide to just repack this figure, oh, my God, I'm going to throw a fit. This is... This is such an outdated mold already. Hasbro, Takara Tomy, you need to stop repurposing this mold and give us a brand new one because obviously it's not in scale anymore. And, you know, if they repack this as Studio Series 86 Megatron, it's just not going to work. Here he is with Studio Series 86 Commander Class Ultra Magnus and Leader Class Dinobot Grimlock. I thought these scaled really nicely with these two larger figures. Here he is with two Voyager class figures, Voyager class Studio Series 86, Ironhide and Ratchet. And with Deluxe class Trailbreaker and Hound, both from the Legacy United uh, 5 pack. With two smaller Deluxes, Deluxe class Wheeljack and Jazz, also both from the Legacy United 5 pack. And finally, two smaller deluxes we have from Takara Tomy, the Legends Deluxe Class Thrilling 30 RC, as well as the new Studio Series 86 Deluxe Class Bumblebees. I put RC in here just so you have a stand-in for Alita 1. I no longer have Alita 1 figures because they're obviously going to be way too short uh, for Optimus Prime. We need a brand new Deluxe Class or Voyager Class Alita 1 to match with this new Studio Series 86 Optimus Prime. And just for fun, here we have the Leader Class CEO Series Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime. It's obviously a third party product, not by Hasbro or Takara Tomy. This is the MHZ Toys or MH01 Optimus Prime figure. And he's almost the same height. He's just three millimeters shorter. And probably the most important size comparisons in robot mode. Here he is with a couple of Optimus Prime figures. The one on the right is the G1 Optimus Prime. This is the missing link version by Takara Tomy. So on the left is the Earthrise or Kingdom War for Cybertron Trilogy leader class Optimus Prime. Obviously, this one is a, more of a Voyager class in scale, but it is categorized as leader class. And wow, what an improvement. You can see the evolution of this character in toy format over the years, over a span of four decades. Unbelievable, this figure. It, it took us 40 years to get to this. It, it is just absolutely amazing. And I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but this this one is looking to be obsolete now with this new figure. It's still a great figure, but uh, no, no contest, man. Um, you just look at these guys and them around. Yeah, this one will have a lot of kibble, but just like the Masterpiece MP44. I think that's where they're coming from with this the new design. But you can see how streamlined it is. And you guys, I'm calling it now. We are going to see a toy accurate version of this figure with the silver legs and silver. I just hope they put some chrome in it. Is it too much to ask now? I doubt they'll put the vac metal, but it would be super awesome if we can get the color, these colors slapped onto this mold. I would totally buy that. Oh my goodness. Even if it's a Takara Tomy version and they charge it, what, 200 bucks? I'd probably get it. But yeah. Now, for those of you wondering, should you replace your old Earthrise or Kingdom War for Cybertron Trilogy mold? My answer is absolutely yes. You have to replace this one if you're a big fan of Optimus Prime. If you're a casual collector, you don't really need an expensive masterpiece 
piece styled Optimus Prime, then sure, you can go ahead and keep this and just miss out on such an amazing figure. But if you're a big Optimus Prime fan, my good buddy Joshua, oh, that guy, I'm pretty sure he's just drooling all over this figure. And I already told him he has to get this one. Go get it, pre-order it or something. I get Find a way to get it because it just looks absolutely amazing. And if you wanted to see their matrix of leadership or the matrices of leadership, obviously that G1 looks absolutely phenomenal. This new missing link, all chromed out matrix of leadership. But unfortunately, we still get the same tiny matrix. I don't know why they didn't change that. Scale wise, I think it's correct. But you can see there's so much space in the chest cavity. They could have given us a bigger one so that he could probably hold it better. He can still hold that one with his index finger, but it is the exact same matrix that we've been getting over the past few years. Even this, the Galvatron matrix, it's exactly the same as that. This one's just beautifully painted in gold and silver. Uh, matte silver, I think, not as metallic as this one, but that gold is really popping um with this new matrix but unfortunately it's the exact same one same tiny one and if you wanted to see optimus prime with the studio series 86 bumblebee they really look good together friends for life <laughs> these are easily the two best transformers figures we've had this year and in case you wanted to see how he looked like with another commander class figure this is the armada universe legacy evolution commander class optimus prime Articulation of the figure, the neck is on a ball joint, but severely limited in range of motion. I don't know what's up with that. I wish they could have put in, uh, some space right there to allow him to look up so that if you have a jetpack, you just shoot up and look up, but he doesn't do that. That's probably a, a minor complaint of mine with this neck joint. Horns are actually on swivel, so if you get yours and you're thinking, oh my God, they mismolded it or they misassembled it, oh, you, you just swivel it up and it'll line up properly. He's got a waist swivel. Unfortunately, there is no ab crunch, basically because of the transformation, it's just too involved to have any ab crunch. You open up the skirts right here, much like a masterpiece figure. Uh, and you'll reveal a hinges on his hips. You can make him do the splits. Uh, you can have him kick forward, backward, unhindered. That's a nice touch. Uh, thigh is on a swivel. You've got a hinged knee that bends more than 90 degrees. The ankles are, are on rocker tilts and they snap into place. The toes can point down because of transformation. Now let's talk about the arms. The fingers have articulation. He can do the, you can have him point or you can have it grip a, a pistol, pistol trigger grip, and have it make a fist. That's pretty cool. He's got a swivel wrist, a hinge elbow, 90 degrees only, unfortunately, and it's not double hinges. He's got a bicep swivel, and then the shoulder joints. Well, he's got hinges that allow you to move in and out, swing forward, backward 360, but he's got a double butterfly hinge joint, or I think it's called a saloon door hinge, because Look at this, you can actually have his arms go forward, swing forward with the butterfly joint, but you have it back here. And there's another joint, inner joint, that allow you to swing the shoulders back. So it's like a saloon door, uh, I think. <laughs> if that's, there's such a term. You move forward and swing it backwards. Thought, I thought that was very cool. That's, that's just amazing, amazing engineering. Now, plastic quality, very simply, absolutely premium all around there is not an inch of cheap plastic on this figure i kid you not even the smokestacks they feel very solid the head sculpt even if it does a little bit bendy it does feel very very premium every inch of the of the figure they did not save or they did not try to cut corners on it this is how you do figures hasbro I mean, people are going to pay for quality. If, if you just keep dishing out quality figures, you're not going to hear any complaints from me about plastic quality. Paint apps, again, impeccable, immaculate paint apps on this figure. You've got uh, yellow on white. You've got the windshield painted. The eyes are painted. The, the, the gray on the, uh, the faceplate is painted beautifully. Paint here, the Autobot faction symbol. I just can't stop gushing over this figure. It's just wonderfully, wonderfully painted. 
every inch of this figure has some amazing sculpt and they've hidden all the gaps beautifully well some gaps here but most of the pieces are solid you can see some designs here and there you'll see more of that in truck mode it's not just a smooth out panel plastic they actually put some time and effort to sculpt things about it even the kibble the way it compresses it's easily forgivable i thought i would absolutely hate that huge backpack but the way things just compress and the engineering that, that, that's involved in this you can skim over that and just forgive that huge backpack i was also worried about the chest being just way too much in front way too big it is kind of i mean compared to the uh see the earthrise or kingdom they kind of similar the chest is just jutting way too much in front but i was worried that it was going to be way too much in front like the mp44 but it's not it's it's actually it's pretty good pretty good solid proportion and just to give you that close-up look of that gorgeous head sculpt this is so g1 movie 1986 Transformers the movie and G1 cartoon Optimus Prime down to his eyes, the crest on the head, the shape of, of that helmet. I do wish the uh, horns could have been a little bit pointed, a little bit pointy instead of uh, a snub tip, but I guess for safety reasons they had to do that glossy uh, gray paint on that uh, or plastic uh, on the face and that face face shield or the face mask oh man just a gorgeous gorgeous looking optimus prime okay so let's talk about the features and accessories of this figure obviously he's got his trailer we'll see more of this in action in alt mode so there is a stand right here you can flick it up flick it down and it'll allow you to stand the trailer without the cab the trailer also has a hidden compartment at the rear section now you pop the bumper just untab it and it'll allow you to fold down the rear wheels and in it you can store some blast effects we'll see more of this uh, blast effects in action in truck mode so we'll set that off to the side and this thing is a really nice way for hasbro to justify the hollowness of the plastic it's like a carryover feature from that kingdom commander class uh, rodimus rodimus prime so yeah okay very cool but even if the compartment is hollow the whole section the whole rear end does feel very very solid now just like the old g1 toy there is a flip out um, i guess stand or stabilizer uh, stand for the trailer and it's nice that these things just swivel so that they're out of the way they don't really interfere that locks the trailer in a position sort of so you fold down the loading ramp and then you open up the trailer and inside the trailer you can store a bunch of things he's got his ion blaster some blast effects energon axe the repair bot or repair drone and roller so roller is a little bit wider this time around compared to the uh centurion drones accessory pack and uh i i I think this is more cartoon accurate. He unpeg him and he will roll very nicely. And um, the instructions say that this particular roller will actually seat Titan Masters or Prime Masters. Uh, if you have four of these guys, you can actually have them sit down back to back in roller. But I only have one left. This is Alchemist Prime and it, it takes... It takes a little bit of finagling and moving about just to get him in a good seated seated position. So you 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 just have him start out with his legs sort of stretched out, and then once you have him inside, you try and just bend the the legs if you can, and that will secure him in place. And that's the best way I know to seat these figures. Now, four figures, I think it's going to be tough seating them in that position, maybe two at a time, but uh, it does work. Maybe in the future, we'll get Spike and Spark Plug, maybe Carly, uh, that about this size, and we'll, we can have them sit down there. So very nice. They're all on rivets. Very, very cool. Okay, this one is a repair drone, much like the G1 toy. It does pop up and has the arm, the claw, does open and the satellite radar dish 
does open and then uh like I mentioned earlier, the canopy does open. I don't think anything can fit there. Maybe a Zoids molded figure could fit there, but none of the smaller Micro Masters or Prime Masters can fit there. So it's nice, very cool. It resembles the old G1 toy and it is removable and you can plug it onto a roller and you can have roller just have the repair joint. I don't know why you would want to do that, but yeah. Now he also comes with some blast effects and the, uh, repair drone is compatible for these blast effects these blast effects are really meant for his ion blaster which i'll show off now right here so it's a very very cool looking blaster very g1-esque style and at the same time it incorporates a lot of the details of the old g1 figure you can actually put the blast effect right there and obviously you can have optimus hold his blaster and blast away at the decepticons now if you have the old uh, war for cybertron trilogy blast effects i'm pretty sure this blaster would also be compatible to that so yeah very cool now here is the ion blaster that came with the generation select centurion drone weapons kit and it's much bigger i do like the size of this one if you have the war for cybertron trilogy blast effects Personally, I think this Generation Selects Blaster fits this figure better. But look at this. Let's talk about the final accessory that this figure has. Incidentally, if you're wondering why there are two holes, one is really for the figure and the other one is really for storage. Very accurate to the cartoon. It's sort of, it's not transparent. It's bordering on opaque and translucent, but it is translucent. You can see my fingers through it. And to attach it to his arm or his hand, you've open up the panel this is how you transform him to truck mode his arm and then you just clip it on and then you just peg that battle axe or energon axe where the fist used to be and there you go he's ready to go ready to rock it and battle it out with megatron incidentally speaking of megatron here's oh sorry to do it properly there we go uh He's, he's got his uh, morning star or what is this mace chain mail or uh, melee and they can duke it out just like in that third episode of season one but obviously it's not gonna work because Megatron is just Megatron is just way too small but uh, it, it's still it's still a good display on the shelf you can still have him duke it out <laughs> Let me just bring in the Energon Axe that came in the same pack that this thing came with the Centurion drone. And there is a way to connect it if you wanted to. You just have to put it on the underside of his fist and maybe put a little bit of imagination, just trying to spin that around. And you know what? If you ask me, I am a little bit partial to this Generation Select's uh, Energon Axe than this official one. This official one is okay. It's very cartoon accurate, but just aesthetic wise, I mean, look at this thing. It's clear, hard plastic. It looks more like an Energon Axe than this one. So one last bit about the trailer. Let's see how many Autobots can fit inside. So obviously Bumblebee's gonna fit. And if you have the repair drone, you can only fit another mini bot with Bumblebee. That's it. That's how big the space is. But let's remove that repair drone and let's see how many others can fit. Maybe you can fit three mini bots. Uh, not really. Nope. Maybe you can fit two regular size deluxes. We've got Sunstreaker and Jazz. Yep, definitely. A Voyager class that's technically a deluxe class. Can he fit? Ah, uh, that light bar is in the way. Maybe I should have brought in Ironhide, but you get you get the idea. Yeah, he, he can probably squeeze in. Maybe Ironhide can... If you had Ironhide, can two deluxe... Yeah, well, not really. No, there's a... The bumper is just way too big. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit, few millimeters left uh, just to squeeze... A Voyager class and a Deluxe class. Bitin talaga. Anyway, so maybe a mini bot. Yep, with a Voyager. The most comfortable uh, figures to fit in is a small Deluxe or mini bot with a regular Deluxe class sized figure. So, transformation. Now, before we get him into his truck mode, incidentally, you can store his uh, Ion Blaster on either side of his backpack. 
which I thought was a very good nod to the G1 cartoon because he always gets his gun from his back. It just somehow materializes in the cartoon. So uh, he's kept with tradition, this figure, uh, always storing the weapon in the backpack. So put that weapon off to the side. And for the duration of this transformation, we will be using a tool because a lot of the panels and the joints are really very tight uh, with this figure. And like I can always say, you know, it's always tight the first time you do it. So once you do it after a few times, it gets easier. But for now, just so we don't hurt ourselves or we don't, we don't really damage anything, we're gonna use this pocket knife. You can use a screwdriver or anything like that, but the pocket knife has a very smoothened out edge for most of the tools, so they won't damage the figure. Now, I know I showed off the Matrix earlier, but uh, for those of you who wanted to see how Matrix was revealed, the chest opens up this way, and you open up this panel. It is very accurate to how it happened in the movie. There was an inner panel, and uh, like I said earlier, it's a shame we we're still getting the old Matrix and not a new one. So, close up the panels. And then, the first thing you want to do is you want to open up the forearm panels. These were very tight. They were absolute nail breakers. Uh, there's no easy way to do it. You can just try and pry it open like I said, with the tool, just very, very carefully, you can just pry it open. And then you fold the fist upward. Make sure the fist is, well, the fingers are, are clenched as a fist, otherwise you're not gonna be able to fold it in. And then close that panel back. Boy, it is tight. Let's do the same on the other side. Let me see if this is easier. Oh, okay, much easier on the other side. Fold the fist up and then close that panel down. Okay. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna rotate the bicep and then fold back the arm. So, the arm actually folds this way in transformation, not the traditional way this way in, in the old G1 toy. So, folds back this way and then you rotate that arm. The smokestacks, they're just, they're gonna be flopping all over the place. So just, just put them in a position that they don't get in the way. So, set the arms off to the side just so they're out of the way and they're not bothering you. Okay. Then you wanna do the backpack. Or you can do this one first, the rear section, his, his rear end, you wanna fold it down. And then the backpack. Uh, to do the backpack, you need to unfold this panel right here. And again, it is a little difficult to do it with your fingers. So a, a nice smooth tool is gonna to help you unfold these panels right here. Okay, do that. And then these side panels right here, you're gonna flip them out. You can reach in with your fingers if you want to. Okay, and let's clear the arm because this whole backpack is going to rotate on the front side. These are the truck windows as, as well as the chest, so there's nothing wrong with that, but this is a fall grill on the truck. This is only his abdomen in robot mode. His actual grill for the truck is right here. So, open up this panel right here. You wanna go ahead and fold these this whole backpack section down. You don't have to fold this one, but just fold it out this way and this way, so it's much easier. Okay, and then this whole front part of the truck assembly, which forms this backpack, is going to rotate going to the front, okay? But the top part of his torso needs to stay in the same position. So if, if it rotates with it, just re-rotate it back, and you must end up in this position so the whole backpack has to be now the front part of the robot and the abdomen goes at the back okay now this uh there's a panel right here the fake grill you're gonna fold it up and that's gonna cover up the head now for my copy of the figure i found the most difficult part of the transformation was the rotation of that head and neck assembly and the way to do it is you rotate it this way and you need to rotate it a full 180 degrees now for my copy, the clearance was incredibly, incredibly tight. It was so tight, I could not push it down. I had to put a little bit of WD-40 just to lubricate that part right there. It is a very, very tight squeeze. And you know, it helps if you fold his antennae, his, the horns a little bit forward so they don't scrape the floor at the bottom there. But you just have to just be patient, just, just, you know, squeeze and swivel and till you get it, okay? And I had to put a little bit of WD-40 and I think it helped uh, with it. But after a while, this is the third, fourth time I think I've done this. It's still tight, 
but it was a pain to transform that neck part. So that's the first thing you need to check when you take the, the figure out of packaging. Okay, now that you've done that, you wanna go ahead and um, I guess you wanna cover up that part of the head and then you wanna stretch it out first, my bad, and fold it down like that. The arms are gonna transform like they do G1. I'm gonna fold it down and then these side abs are gonna fold out of the way and up in front, okay? That's the easiest way, you know, because it's a double hinge. If you just try and fold it this way, it's, it's gonna be very tight. Most of the joints are pretty tight. So fold it back first, just to set it up and then fold it back in front. Ugh, it's the fourth time I'm doing this and it's still tight. I'm not complaining too much. Tight joints are still better than loose joints. So once you have them up there, Fold it in front. Now you can fold the arms this way and tab them onto that neck piece, that flap on the neck. And then you want to just fold these, uh, I guess these panels back down. And then you want to rotate the arms so that they, they sort of fit into that groove of the side abs or the side, side torso panels, okay? And then underneath right here, there are small tabs. They are going to tab onto those forearms and that that makes up the sort of the back part of the semi. Now, it's really a simple transformation. I'm just making a big deal out of it just so I can emphasize, you know, which of the pieces go where and there. Because at first glance, it may look as tedious as transforming a masterpiece figure, but it, it's not. It's really a mix of masterpiece and mainline transformation. But anyway, this piece right here, you're going to need to fold it down. So again, assistance of the tool. Uh, yeah, just fold it down very gingerly. Okay. Oh, tight, tight joints. And then fold out this piece right here. Okay, here we go. Fold it out like that. And then you want to fold it back up to complete the front part of the truck. And then you want to just line up that front part up to the chest or the windows and that'll form the front part of the truck. These red pieces right here are a little bit darker than the, these pieces right here. So I think I've made that match better, but it's okay. Now these panels right here, they're going to fold out and prepare this entire section right here. These panels, side panels, they are going to fold up and close up the sides of the truck and form the doors, windows, and side view mirrors. And you can see right here how solid that thing looks. That cab, absolutely gorgeous. There's hardly any gaps. Oh, sure, there's a gap right here, but that's forgivable. But most of the parts right here, if, if you compare it with a lot of the, line transformers, you can see usually there's a bunch of gaps here and there, but this one, absolute solid transformation. Onto the legs. Let's begin with these panels right here. Uh, you might need the assistance of the tool. Okay, just snap that out. Same thing here. I'm gonna snap these piece panels right here and then fold them off to the side. They are going to join together, but uh, before we do that, we want to just untab that waist or hip assembly and then fold back the whole leg assembly. And then these, this panel right here is gonna fold down and squeeze in between the wheels and the wheels are gonna lock it securely in place. Just flip this inner tab out like that. Same thing here. Okay, so the tool really helps. Okay, and then what you wanna do is you wanna join the legs together via those tabs. And then those panels right here on the shins, they also tab in together. And the feet, they're going to fold down. Okay, and then these panels right here, a lot of people have pointed out that on online that they've been misassembled. And yeah, I checked the instructions. Uh, they are really misassembled because the, uh, this, the instructions show that these, these two grooves right there, when you fold them down, the, you know, the instructions, it says the two grooves should be on top. But uh, you know what? It's not that big of a deal for me. I, I don't think it's going to detract on the aesthetic, on how awesome the aesthetic of this truck mode is. I don't think you need to go through all the trouble and just, just 
push the pins out and replace and all that, I, I, I don't think it's worth the trouble. I think it's fine if you're not too picky on aesthetic. You'll only notice that it's wrong if you look at it closely, so, okay. And then these panels right here, they're gonna fold up and then they are going to join the rear, the elbows, I should say, tab in there. And then they're going to tab onto the rear part of the thighs. So tap that in first, if you can, and then tab them at, at the rear end of the elbows. Okay, let's line up these. Okay, and that solidifies the whole truck fuselage, fuselage I mean the whole truck uh, chassis. I mean, it is really a solid, solid transformation. We're not even done yet, and you can already see how solid it is. So the last bit are the wheels and the side panels right here. So these panels, you're going to slide down and very tight. And then you're gonna rotate these panels and then you're going to have them slide up. Now, if you just slide them up, they're gonna hit the wheel. So you need to move them off to the side just a little bit. Uh, that's something I didn't appreciate because over time, you're gonna put some stress on that hinge, but you should have measured that clearance better. Uh, it could have been much better. That, that's a small nitpick, but it, it is annoying uh, for me. So just move it off to the side a little bit and just tab it in. It was like two millimeters or um, one millimeter shy of, of being, of clearing that wheel. Anyway, last thing you wanna do is you wanna fold out the tires. I mean, even the last step of the transformation. So satisfying, so gorgeous. The engineering on this thing, just amazing. Ah, oh, man, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I thought, you know, there was a time I thought I would hate the transformation of this figure. I thought it was gonna be like masterpiece annoying. It's not. It, uh, if you've had the MPM 12, the movie masterpiece 12, Bumblebee movie, Optimus Prime. That's probably the only masterpiece that doesn't have a very tedious and annoying transformation, cumbersome transformation. But uh, yeah, can the, the gun fit right here? Uh, nope, I don't think so. Nope, I don't think so. So the gun will store in the trailer. And speaking of the trailer, bring in the trailer. You know, fold and tab in the stand. Just hook it in. It's a, it's not that tight of a, of a peg hole, but it is there. And you can have him turn sidewards. The actual hitch is actually molded in. I think that was the best they could have done if they had made it, you know, if they made it molded, protruding out, it would have ruined the transformation. And uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so in truck mode, gorgeous. Gorgeous Optimus Prime in truck mode. And then in the movie, he just launches those thrusters. And speaking of the thrusters, let's bring those in. They actually tab in. And they're made up of two pieces. You need to assemble them. And then you, I thought they were like a stand in the beginning. I first tried to do this, but actually they do tab in. Oh, my bad. Okay, so even with the trailer, I think that's the reason they made the, that peg hole a little bit bigger than usual is so you could do this and it just launches optimus prime in the sky so you can blast away at the decepticons best scene in the movie for me gorgeous gorgeous truck mode and at the same time what a wonderfully engineered transformation double thumbs up to the engineers and designers of this figure and for comparisons in truck mode here is the studio series 86 optimus prime with the missing link g1 optimus prime actually not bad they look great together here he is with the warf cybertron trilogy earthrise or kingdom optimus prime definitely so much tinier than <laughs> than this guy. I mean, he's, he's, he's been a, a great G1 style generations Optimus Prime figure for the longest time. But sadly, this new one is really now the gold standard for G1 style generations Optimus Prime. And for the longest time, we've been telling Hasbro that the proportions for the trailer and the semi cab are just so wrong. You can clearly see here, they got it right this time with the Studio Series version. Of course, nothing beats G1. G1 is still, I think for me as a toy in truck mode, the best looking one But the Studio Series really, really does reflect that old cartoon accurate version of Optimus Prime. And if you wanted to see them all in one go, there you go. And conversely, if you wanted to swap out trailers and trucks, 
Yeah, uh, the look how much nicer the Earthrise looks with a much bigger trailer. And then in the same vein, <laughs> actually, <laughs> yeah, it looks stupid, but uh, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Can the G1 trailer work? I don't know it's a little elevated but and can this one fit g1 on display sure why not and if you wanted a comparison of just the cabs the semis here you go and so some final thoughts on the studio series 86 commander class optimus prime need i say more this figure completely blew me away and first off i want to commend hasbro for giving us a super premium just amazing quality product you can see that the plastic quality on this thing is just absolutely superb the figure is so solid there's hardly any gaps i mean kaya nyo naman palang gawin eh. i mean you guys can absolutely do a figure that is by leaps and bounds better than anything you've done that conforms to the highest form of quality standards you can absolutely do one i don't understand why you keep doing figures like this all the time this is such an amazing figure that i could hardly find any flaw or fault as far as engineering goes i was afraid this thing was going to be like a masterpiece it was going to be cumbersome and annoying to transform but surprisingly it is not it is a great mix of masterpiece involvement and mainline fun and satisfa satisfying transformation. Everything I felt about this figure had been well thought out and they, they spared no expense when designing this thing. That uh, Centurion drone gun and battle axe really, really make this figure pop. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the, st the stock weapons that this figure has, but if you have these weapons, man, it just puts this figure up and another level and I, I thought it was just really really cool you know already see my top 10 or top 20 favorite figures of the year these two figures are definitely on top this optimus prime was just such a joy such a treat i honestly did not think hasbro could pull it off or come up with a figure this this good you're a hardcore transformers collector and if you're a big optimus prime fan you have got to pick this figure up truly this is a mainline masterpiece this figure is going to get my legendary 11 out of 10 rating absolutely gorgeous my good buddy joshua if you're watching man i cannot emphasize the fact that you've got to secure this one if there's one toy one figure you got to pick up this year it's got to be this one anyway those are my thoughts on this amazing figure let me know what you guys think of this transformers studio series 86 from the movie transformers the movie back in 1986 commander class optimus prime hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews and if it's your first time here please subscribe thanks for watching I'll use roller. And be careful!